This is the R1 Nova, Rhombus's newest paddle. While it does look similar to Rhombus's other paddles like the R1.16 and R1 Pulsar, the Nova is actually what Rhombus calls a Gen 3 paddle. Now what exactly is Gen 3? Well to describe that, we first need to understand what the previous generation of paddles are, so I'll do the best I can to summarize the research paper Rhombus provided me on paddle construction. Let's start with Gen 1 paddles. These are what you call cold press paddles, since their assembly of the paddle requires no heat. Two sheets of carbon fiber are glued and pressed onto each side of a honeycomb core. Once this is done, the shape of a paddle is then cut out and an edge guard is then wrapped around the perimeter to seal everything in. The Gen 1 paddles are known for their soft, plush feel and are geared towards control. While they are older paddles using an older construction technique, they're still popular paddles for many looking for control in their game. Examples of this are the Rhombus R1.16, Electrum Model E, and the Carbon 1. Next up is the Gen 1.5 paddles, introduced by the Yola Hyperion, which brought up the innovation of injecting edge foam in the paddle perimeter. The added benefit of this is perimeter weighting around the paddle, which improves the sweet spot. The process for these starts the same as a Gen 1 paddle, but foam is injected in the edges of the honeycomb core after the paddle shape is cut out of the sheet. This is then placed into a hot mold. The heat causes the foam to expand, and then an edge guard is attached to seal everything together. Compared to Gen 1 paddles, these are also control oriented, but just have the added benefit of a larger sweet spot from the foam. The reason it gets the name Gen 1.5 is from how its construction process is in between Gen 1 and Gen 2. So let's move on to Gen 2. These are more commonly known as the thermoform paddles on the market. Paddles like the Rhombus Pulsars, Batic Pro V7, and the 60 Double Black Diamond are all examples of this. The difference between Gen 2 from the previous generations is that the paddles are placed in the hot mold for the entire construction process. While Gen 1 doesn't use a hot mold, and Gen 1.5 only uses a mold when the edge foam is injected at the end, from start to finish for Gen 2, the paddle sits in the hot mold. For the previous generations, while the carbon fiber was glued onto the honeycomb in a sheet and then cut out to make the mold, in Gen 2 paddles, the honeycomb core and carbon fiber sheets are pre-cut into a paddle shape before assembly. The honeycomb core is injected with edge foam, similar to the Gen 1.5 paddles, and then both sides of the paddle have carbon fiber faces attached, before a carbon seam then seals everything together around the perimeter. This carbon fiber enclosed paddle is then placed in the hot mold for a period of time, and then once ready, the edge guard is attached onto the sides over the carbon fiber seam. The heat and pressure from the mold bonds everything together and lets the glue disperse between all layers of the paddle, creating a unibody paddle that is significantly more powerful and stiffer than the previous generations of paddles. While thicker paddles were always known for being more control oriented, these thermoform paddles allow thicker paddles to have more power and pop while still having the feel of a thicker paddle. Now this Gen 2 construction process ended up having some drawbacks, the main ones being crushed cores, disbonding, and delamination. Delamination is the carbon fiber surface coming apart on the face. Disbonding is the carbon fiber face sheet separating from the honeycomb core. And crushed core is the honeycomb core itself being crushed and broken in. Although delamination is the popular term for paddles that do face these issues, it's actually desponding and crushed cores that are more common. So how does thermoforming cause these problems? First, honeycomb cores all have some imperfections at the microscopic level, and this allows space for air to come in between the honeycomb core and the face sheet. Since the whole paddle is enclosed in carbon fiber during the hot mold process, the high temperature and pressure can cause the air pockets inside to expand and create internal pressure. Eventually, after the paddle starts to see play, the constant action of the ball hitting the face will cause areas of the core to be crushed. This then makes the paddle have increased power from the ball not hitting a solid surface, but instead trampolining off the crushed core in the interior. While this added power may be seen as a good thing by some, at times the power can be a bit uncontrollable and harder to develop a touch with the paddle. The other issue is that the paddle would not pass a deflection test and would thus not be legal for play. Oftentimes you can tell when a paddle has this problem by the louder sound it makes and when you can hear a cracking sound when you dig your fingertips into the paddle face. And this brings us into the Gen 3 paddle that is the R1 Nova. 
The Nova actually has the same construction process as the hot mold in Gen 2, except for one key difference that Rhombus has filed a patent on. Remember how the Gen 2 paddles are completely enclosed in carbon fiber because of the carbon seam on the sides covering the foam? What Rhombus has done is instead use a permeable carbon fiber grid to seal in the edge foam so the paddle isn't completely enclosed, which allows for the internal pressure to be released during the thermoforming process. By allowing the pressure to escape from the grid design on the edges, Rhombus has solved the crushed core issue that has affected all of the Gen 2 thermoform paddles. Since the Nova goes through the same hot mold process, but has the carbon fiber grid on the edges to release pressure, it makes the paddle more balanced in a way, where it's not as powerful or stiff as other Gen 2 paddles, but is still more powerful compared to Gen 1 and 1.5. Now that we've gone through the research paper that Rhombus has provided, you basically get the gist of what the R1 Nova is. A softer and more plush thermoform paddle that won't have the issues that Gen 2 paddles have. While many companies have claimed to do some changes with their construction or factories to fix the Gen 2 issues, there still have been reports of those paddles having issues and needing to be replaced. Rhombus is the first one to publicly identify what the core issue is and what they have specifically done to solve it. Also attached in the documents Rhombus has provided me are a video and results of the Nova sitting in a machine that struck the paddle 10,000 times and then evidence of the cores still being intact after dissection. So while I haven't had the Nova for too long, I'm confident that it is a paddle that won't have any Gen 2 issues. I've mentioned this briefly, but the Nova is pretty much just a softer and less stiff thermoform paddle. I would say while it's in between the Gen 1.5 and Gen 2 paddles, it leans more towards being similar to the Gen 2 paddles. The R1 Nova is a 16mm elongated paddle with the arrow curve shape, and the website lists the overall length at 16.5 inches with a 5.5 inch handle. Since there isn't a carbon fiber seam, but instead a permeable grid around the edge foam, this also causes the paddle to be a bit lighter and less head heavy compared to the Gen 2 R1 Pulsar. The stock weight of mine was 7.7 .7 ounces, and the swing weight is advertised as 115, which is a few points lower than the R1 Pulsar. Now this did cause the twist weight to be slightly lower than the Pulsar, so I did end up adding lead tape on the sides to put the weight up to 8.1 ounces, just to improve the power and stability of the paddle a bit. The way the Nova plays isn't drastically different or revolutionary compared to other Gen 2 paddles. What is special about the paddle is just the patented construction process from the carbon fiber grid. So if you do try one out, don't expect it to play very different from existing paddles on the market. What you will get from the Nova is a thermoformed rhombus paddle with great build quality, great spin, and no Gen 2 issues. Gen 3 really isn't anything special, but just a refinement of Gen 2 and what Gen 2 really should have been. The Nova retails for $180, which doesn't make it pricier than some of the other thermoform brands, but with a guarantee that this paddle won't have a crushed core and with Rhombus's great track record for excellent quality paddles, the Nova is definitely something to consider, especially if you are someone who has experienced several of the Gen 2 issues in paddles. If you are interested in picking up a R1 Nova, I've linked my discount code here and in the description below, which will get you $20 off your order from the Rhombus website.
My ball is in here? I need to do that. <laughs>